wasn't until about April that I got assigned to uh, to the Beast uh, crew, uh, 344. Uh, good, good crew. It was kind of cool because they didn't have a ton of experience with uh, JTACs, deploying with JTACs. A um, couple of them had it controlled. One guy had controlled CAS in Panama, you know, uh, and then the... Uh, the alpha, I remember the, the team leader, He, I remember him telling me uh, an experience he had in Afghanistan where someone brought air in too early. So he was a little gun shy to get air oh. involved too much. Um, luckily, that changed quick after the first firefight near shows up and, and helps the situation. So we got past that quick. But I liked going in and there weren't a ton of preconceived notions. You know, I just had to show up and I had to earn like every bit of respect I got for sure. Right. Uh, you know how that is, but but I, but I had no problem pulling my weight. So it was it was a good crew. They were cool about learning, cool about teaching, and we started out in Deirawood, which are mostly uh, you know warlords and drug factions fighting and stuff like that. Um, right. And and I think we were doing some good stuff because this team was busy. They didn't stay inside the wire. Every day they're out running checkpoints or following up on some uh, humans or something. They stayed busy, which was really cool. Um, yeah. But uh, after we were in Darrowood for a while, um, they got uh, the team got pushed to Organy, close to the border, uh, and there was a lot happening there. In fact, I remember there was another team ripping out, and I remember talking to JTAC, and he'd been frustrated because his team had just been sitting inside the wire. Meanwhile, there's an insurgency, you know, an ACM group that's uh, building up because it was so quiet, and for sure they had a pretty good fit, foothold in uh guyan valley at this point and they were doing the normal stuff right they have these attacks on the locals intimidate them pay them to just launch random rockets at uh friendlies or anyone supporting their friendlies so it was a a, a mess yeah but we got in there and uh we had been hammering on them pretty good trying to trade them down pick at them you know uh catching them when they're in the market in the village and stuff like that yeah. um the july uh 19th gig so we were uh we had a pretty good idea of where they were hanging out we had pretty good humans on where to find them where they were holding up how they were moving back and forth across the border in the guyan valley is a pretty treacherous mountainous area you know i've seen it a bunch of times but uh yeah. um it gave them pretty good access across the border so we figured we'd put um it, and i say this like it was my plan right but the right. idea was stick our oda <clears throat> uh up at the end of the valley and then conventional forces were gonna sweep through the valley and route uh any uh enemies they found or push them to us so that we could neutralize them um the only problem was uh with the elevation you know airlifting isn't easy and we were kind of a mounted force for the most part for the most part there um and we wanted to be mounted for this so we could have all the big guns sure. uh and so to get to our blocking pos position we basically had to drive right through the front yard of where these cats were hanging out oh um so it was dumb and we knew we were <laughs> we knew we were going to catch it uh on the way in uh we figured we would catch it a lot more than we did um, but it's like an eight, nine or something hour, uh, drive, uh, to leave the fire base and get to where we're going, yeah. um, through the mountains. So really looking forward to that one. So a requested <laughs> air had a plan. So we'd have escort and I'd have uh, air on station to go do some reconnaissance every once in a while and that whole thing. Um, and it was working out good. Um, I'd say we were about, man, five hours in or something like that. Uh, when we passed through a village, clearly an unfriendly village, clearly this uh, insurgency group had a good foothold, or at least stranglehold there. Uh, and as we're leaving this village, you know, there's one road in, one road out on the other side. Right. Um, uh, two trucks uh, jam past us, pulling around us, two Hiluxes, right? full of males of fighting age in the bed in the bed of the truck so it's like well <laughs> they saw us they're going to set up ahead of us i mean it's clear what they're doing right. um, but you know roe we can't stop them or do anything they have to move on so at that point we just uh you know we just got a little salty uh got hyper vigilant and uh um of course because of the nature of the roads and the terrain there we were on a, a mountain road and we were at a place where there's some s curves um high terrain to our left it dropped off to our right and then i would say 
uh, 100 to 150 meters across the ridge to our right was more high ground. <clears throat> and uh, we were moving along and I was in the commander's vehicle. I was actually in the turret uh, and uh, had another Bravo in the back. And uh, yeah, the commander and a driver. Uh, and then we had a, it was basically three US GMVs and then three AMF trucks is how we were, how we were moving. Okay. And uh, so we started hearing a few shots pop off, of course. Um, and we stopped, of course. I was already swinging around the, uh, my turret so I could get targets with the Mark 19 is what I had. Um, a 40 mil grenade launcher. And um, that wasn't for you. <laughs> Sorry. Right. I, I, uh, I appreciate it. No, a lot of yeah. people give me that feedback. They're like, "What are these acronyms you're saying?" No, so no, I appreciate it. Thanks. Yeah. So, uh, um, so I was swinging around, and honestly, I couldn't even make out targets yet. So I just start suppressing areas where it seemed like I'd be shooting from. Right. Obvious sure, sure. Uh, place for. Uh, so along the ridge line, I found some waddies with some brush, uh, and I just start suppressing. Uh, but. I didn't realize at the time we were kind of stuck in the in the kill zone because the vehicle ahead of us, one of the AMF dudes had been shot in the back. It collapsed his lung and he fell out. So they oh, stopped. Wow. The driver got out to check him out. And all the other dudes in the back of the truck dropped their weapons and crawled <laughs> under the vehicle. Oh, no. Uh, oh, yeah. It was awesome. <laughs> so, oh, but the driver was actually kind of a, a badass because um, he, he had a weapon. And he I remember he was just he came over to our vehicle after they secured the other dude. And our driver was uh, an old Delta. And so yeah. he went to help him. And uh, so the driver of that vehicle, some uh, just some Afghani guy, he wasn't even paid as a fighter, but he grabbed uh, the rifle. And I remember he was just laughing and taking cover and popping up and shooting. And I was like, dude, this guy's had too much cot or something. Cause it was pretty funny, but he was committed. It was pretty badass. So, but, uh, so I swung my weapon around and, uh, I emptied a whole can, uh, and then I was going to reload. And, uh, this is why I started feeling some burning on my belly. Right. Uh, which was flatter back then, but I could feel something hot there. And I was like, what the hell? And then it was getting distracted, was starting to hurt. So I reached behind my belt buckle and pull out. And I had, uh, uh, not the, um, when I pulled it out, I heard something fall. All I had in my hand was a, the copper jacket, but the bullet ended up falling onto the, into the vehicle. Okay. And it was around, had probably gone through, um, either the Mark 19 or the vehicle or something and then hit my vest. But you know, you've got your body armor and there's the plate that's in there, but there's about this much room yeah. that isn't covered by that trauma plate. It hit right there, Jeez. but over my belt buckle. And okay. so it didn't penetrate as weird as that is. Yeah, man. I remember it. Cause I remember picking it up and thinking about what happened. I'm like, Holy crap. Uh, yeah. and then I'm like, shake it off. And I dropped it. And then I got back to reloading. And, uh, that's when I realized, uh, my, uh, the weapon wouldn't, when it was malfunctioning and I tried going through all the drills. I remember at one point, I'm even very slowly while freaking rounds are picking off all over the place, trying to concentrate, make sure, you know, the tray, everything in the tray lines up good. And I'm like, okay, well the weapons, it, it didn't work. So finally it was like, it's down. I had my M4, uh, bungee corded, uh, at the base of the Mark 19 in front of me. And so just as I'm starting to grab it, that's when I got hit. Um, and fell down and i didn't even realize i got hit right um i just know suddenly i i've been knocked into the turret and you do the normal check and then i could see a couple spots i'd gotten shot in the arm and then some pieces of metal and stuff hit my wrist and elbow and shoulder so i could see the blood forming on my sleeve yeah. so then i'm like oh i'm hit uh in the driver's right there he pulls me out helps uh tie me up and uh, then I saw the Bravo who'd been in the back. Uh, he'd been shot through the leg and his ammo had gotten all twisted as he tried to dismount with the 240. So he had to abandon that. So mm. I was outside the vehicle with no weapon and no radio with this. Well, I had a pistol, but yeah, that's that's brilliant. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> luckily there were a bunch of AK-47s on the ground. So <laughs> that was handy. Uh, so I had an AK-47 for a little bit. Uh, but I had to get a mic to get the air back. And I forgot to mention this part um, about 10 minutes, I'd say before this ambush kicked off, uh, another fire base, which was, uh, in this part of the region, uh, had a rocket attack. Oh, man. 
So the uh, AV-8, uh, a brand new mission had just checked in, some Harriers. They got redirected over to this firebase that was getting the rocket attack. And then- I mean, was, they needed it, but- Yeah, it, right. It but it, it, for you, yeah. it was literally like 10 minutes too. I mean, it was uh-huh. so- and, it, and I remember we would talk about it later. We're like, was that on purpose? When like, these cats had never shown that level of sophistication in their planning. Uh-huh. So I just think it's more the luck of the day, you know? So- yeah. Uh, so it took a while, you know, I, I, uh, I called back to see Jasota, uh, uh, told him, uh, reported the tick. Um, and we were still trying to recover people and get ammo and get weapons and stuff. So I reported the tick, set the mic down. We took care of some things, uh, air was inbound. Uh, and so I needed a radio though. And, uh, this was when, you know, we were going in theater and, oh, you're not going to need 113s or 77s. Here's the 117. <laughs> Learn it. You have a week, right? It was yeah, one of those yeah. things. Didn't have embitters yet. Well, my 117 is up in the turret where I strapped in my ruck. I have a quick release, but I'm not getting anything off there right now because the turret's right uh, taking all the fire. So, sure, sure. Um, and so I had used the commander's radio and mic uh, to call in the air, but I grabbed an embitter from our driver. He had an embitter, no mic or headset or anything, but some almost like I'm on a freaking cell phone <laughs> trying to talk to the air, but it worked out. It worked out good. Sure. Um, so they started uh, um, checking in. I kind of talked them onto our position and uh, we were close, right? We were easily about a hundred meters, if that. Yeah. Uh, and they, you know, they show up with five inch zoonies, the Harriers do it. I'm not going to use those. And they had a laser guide bomb, not used. So it was pretty much just straight runs. Um, but they did one pass to make sure they were on track. And I said, yes, that's a good pass. And then we started catching some fire again. Right. So I had to put this, my walkie talkie, if you will, <laughs> how I'm using it. I had to set that down. Um, and, uh, and start, uh, fire, cause you know, I had one arm, right. The, my wounded arm, I just kind of clipped into the top of my kit. So I was like uh, weapon mic. And so I had to oh set that God. down. But what was cool is while I'm returning fire, it probably, it seemed like three seconds, but it was probably like seven minutes or something. They didn't hear anything. Um, and so I think they thought we were getting slaughtered. And I know now because I saw them later, uh, um, the in their marine pilots right they they get oh, ground yeah. combat so they came in over the deck and i mean they were that was the lowest damn flight i have ever seen in my life and that was a harrier came screaming across because they were like we didn't hear anything so we just wanted to break it up so they came shooting across the deck nice. um yeah it was pretty sweet so uh after that uh i had them do another run they started doing some strafe runs along the ridge line uh which of course didn't take too long to to break things up um and we still, so we had the AMF vehicle in front of us and then our vehicle on this little mountain road stuck in, in the kill zone. So now we're going to try to break contact, but we don't know where anyone else is, right? We don't know if they're uh, engaging with fire and we don't want to roll, roll around a corner and get lit up. So sure. I start trying to talk to the other vehicles and the vehicles, the vehicles in the front, if I remember, they had pretty much cleared it, uh, and they had set up a position and they were just trying to maintain contact and, and get status and stuff like that. Vehicle, uh, two vehicles in trail were actually engaging uh, as they could. One of the dudes actually got shot um, uh, through the vehicle and caught some in his face and his nose. Um, but they were uh, still working targets, but I was trying to bring them to where they could get their, their 50 cal more on where we were at because that was in uh where the main position was so um so i started talking to them describe where we were and i was like i'll pop a flare so i I had a an ammo box with a bunch of right uh loom and stuff and so i took this stupid thing took the cap off popped it on there boom on the vehicle boom on the ground on my hand nothing and i remember the face of the of our team leader he's like and i could just hear this Air Force, You're right? I could uh, I could sense him saying that. He right. snatches it from me, bam, bam, nothing from him either. So he hands it. He's like, "Oh, don't worry about it." Hands it back to me, pissed off. And I take <laughs> it and I throw it on the ground, and that fucking flare shoots up the damn road. No <laughs> shit. I was like, I was like, what the fuck is going on, man? So um, so I also noticed uh it's it's look at some point what the shit is going on man i don't even remember exactly where in it but i noticed a bunch of metal fragments on the driver's seat um and it looked like a chunks of a gerber 
And sure enough, I felt my waist and uh, I had had a Gerber tool on my belt in a, a, a Cordura sheath and yeah. I just had a little cloth left. So while I'd been in the turret uh, and taken that one in the vest, they'd shot the Gerber off my hip. Oh so my I was God. like, yeah. So I was, I was like, and you know how it is. Sometimes you get all these fights later, you see where all the holes are and everything. Sure. Uh, the Mark 19 got shot up like three, four times. The ring had a few holes in it. I was like, how the hell did I not get hit more? Um, and even, you know, I'm standing here and in the rear driver's seat, we would keep water. Uh, we had a couple rounds in the water bottles. It was pretty cool. It's like we were doing gel test or something. Uh, but yeah, it was nuts. Uh, uh, probably about after the fact, we realized we're probably about 30, 30 to 40, maybe uh, folks in pretty nice uh, a natural cover, uh, yeah. just kind of sitting there for us in, in beautiful terrain. They had the geometry. This wasn't an L this was like a freaking N. Um, they had us covered real nice, man. It sucked. So, uh, so after, um, a control layer, they're starting to break off. We're starting to recover vehicles. Uh, our driver for the vehicle ahead of us uh, tries to turn around for some reason and gets it stuck. So, uh -huh. The, the SF guy who had gotten shot through the leg, he was an old ranger, like yeah. one of those crusty old rangers, probably right. went to ranger school in the 70s. So <laughs> he's he's got his uh, leg bandaged up. It was a through and through, but he still got shot in the leg, right? And yeah. he goes around, he's pushing this thing. I was like, back it up. And he's up against the mountain with his legs, pushing this freaking truck out of a ditch after he gets shot in the leg. I was like, geez, man. And he's not like a big giant dude. He's just one of those crusty old uh guys that you know if anything goes to hell in an apocalypse he's gonna be the one you want to hang out with right sure. so yeah, yeah. so uh so we start to get recovered there uh and then some uh some apaches showed up on my uh on my net on the radio nice. i didn't request those what i think happened and what i'm pretty sure and i don't know if i ever asked the dude uh hoover i'm pretty sure it was hoover who was back okay. uh, at our firebase um I think he pushed me some uh, some uh, Apaches when he heard stuff going down and heard that okay. I was waiting for uh, air to get back. I think he pushed me the Apaches uh, because tr they I didn't request them and they were given my tad. Uh, and so I'm, I forget how I came to that conclusion, but at some point I, I was checking things out. So uh, that's what's cool about the career field. Uh, yeah. So and uh, so I got the Apaches, but we didn't need to engage any targets at this point. We just had them look for an HLZ because uh, we had um, uh, three of our guys wounded, two were medevac, um, and then our AMF guy was in pretty bad shape. So we start uh, breaking contact. I got back up in the, the turret uh, with an M4, uh, and we start exfilling. Um, uh, an Afghani in the back of the truck who had, who had just loaded up because we're trying to uh, scramble out of there has an ad about to shoot my head off so that would have been brilliant oh no kidding no kidding because <laughs> it, it scared me enough i was i was caught back i was like what the fuck? and then I, was, I wanted to crawl back there after all that yeah oh yeah Jesus. it was ridiculous it was ridiculous <laughs> um but we uh yeah we we jam out of there uh we uh link up with the other tr with the other trucks the other parts of the convoy and then we uh, get to an hlz um uh my team sergeant was a former medic him and the the one medic we had with us we only had one at the time because another one ripped yeah uh uh they did a chest tube on this guy at the hlz and everything it was brilliant oh, yeah. too and i found out later while i was in the hospital with, with the afghani dude uh they didn't need to redo anything it was done perfect like on wow. the sand out in the desert after getting everything shot up they're just they were good uh it was a good team great medics yeah. um Great, great all the way around. But uh, yeah, we got out of there. Spent uh, me and the other Bravo got shot through the leg. Spent a night in the hospital, and then we went back to the team. Um, they wanted to keep us longer, but it was there was no no real point to it. Might as well get back with the team. We can get the care we need yeah. from the Deltas. So so that was pretty much it. I'm sure there's stuff I left out, little details that are either funny or or. Uh, embarrassing, but I, I can't recall any hits. Yeah, that's an amazing story, man. That, that I was reading through it. You sent that that bio over, and the thing that struck me the most was that, you know, a lot of us, I, we want to say that we would react like the way you did, but who knows? But you, you did, man. You got shot. You got you were getting things shot off you. Your primary weapon was getting shot, and you just still kept after. You just still did the you and that 
you know, you talk about that ranger that, uh, you know, the old ranger, the crusty guy that was, you know, shot and he was pushing the yeah. truck. You're in that same caliber guy. You're the same, you're in that same group. You were, you just continued to fight. And I, I think that's commendable, man. And not to mention, I don't know if people don't know this, but you got, you got a silver star for, yeah. for this, for this engagement, not to, a purple heart too, but yeah, the, 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 the heroism that you did on that day was just phenomenal, man. No, I appreciate it, dude. Uh, I, uh, Look, uh, you know, decoration stuff and in, in earning the decorations, often you're lucky. Uh, I think I was lucky a lot of ways, a lot of ways that day, but I was also lucky with the team. And this isn't that uh, uh, pedantic, you know, modesty stuff. I really was. I was with a great team. Uh, yeah. It was uh, probably one of the best Army uh, units I've supported in my career, hands down. 